Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Zion Aesthetic. Today I did a get ready with me on this look here. It is a very summery look with a lot of oranges and reds and a golden highlight. For the eyes, I used the new Modern Renaissance palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. She just released this palette a little while ago. Uh, first, it was only available on her website. It's just been made available on Sephora, I think, so go scoop it up. I highly recommend it. I'm going to be doing a full-length palette pageant review on the Modern Renaissance palette, but I just want to show you guys the colors in here real quick. They're super warm. They're super nice. There's a good variation of shimmers and matte shades, and it's perfect for summer because of all those warm, warm colors. I am in love with this palette. Blendability wise, it is the best palette that I own. Blendability is where it prevails most of all. You guys will hear more details about that on my palette pageant review, but for now I'm going to show you guys how I did these eyes and this face. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated to see this palette pageant and other videos that I'm going to be posting. And don't forget to like this video if you're excited to see how I got this look. Other than that, I don't think I really have much else to say, so let's hop right into it. After priming the entire area that I put shadow on with the Urban Decay Primer Potion, I am going to take a sort of skin color, neutral color, and cover my whole eye from the lash line up to the brow. Uh, I think for that I'm going to use Golden Ochre, this beigey color right here, and I'm going to apply that on my Artiste Oval 4 brush. After that, I'm going to start putting a darker color in my crease to create definition. I'm going to be using my Artis Oval 3 brush for that. And for the color, I'm going to go in with this warm taupe over here. I didn't think I was going to have a chance to record today because normally I work on Saturday. But I got a call today at about 6 a.m. waking me up saying, Hey Zion, sorry, but you can't come to work until we get windows in. We are rebuilding the front of an old fellow's house and apparently we've gotten to the point where we cannot go any further until the windows come. We ordered the windows like three weeks ago, so I'm not sure why they still haven't come, but it means I had the day off and I could record a look for you guys. I'm pretty excited. I've only played around with this Anastasia Beverly Hills palette a couple of times, so I'm excited to see what the turnout is going to look like. All right, now that I'm done with the crease, I think I'm going to throw some reddish tones in there. There's a lot of just deep, sort of maroony, red, mauve colors in here. I think I'm going to darken up the outer V with this red ochre color. This is a beautiful, beautiful, like, rust color. And then probably throw some Venetian red and real gar onto the lid. We will see how that ends up looking. I'm going to be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills brush that came with this palette for this look. I really, really, really like this brush, actually. It's one of my favorite brushes that I own, and it's a palette brush, which is so mind-blowing because palette brushes usually suck dick. The quality is just not there. But with this one, it's actually taken the place of some of my shadow brushes. I ended up just taking this out and putting it in my brush container and using it on a daily basis, even when I'm not doing looks with this palette. Alrighty, so I took red ochre and put that right on the outer V to darken that up and to bring that red into it. And then I took Venetian red and Realgar, these two colors down here, and I used Venetian red to blend that red ochre onto the lid, and then I covered most of my lid with Realgar, this standout orange. Uh, this is one of the most unique colors in this palette, in my opinion, and I have not done a look with it before today, so 
I figured I'd give that a try. Now I'm going to finish off the upper lid by highlighting under the brow bone with tempura, this color up here. I'm gonna get into more detail in my upcoming video palette pageant review for this palette, but right now I am gonna tell you guys, out of every palette I own, blendability wise, this is definitely the best. I can just flip anything on and blend it up quite instantly. I went ahead and did my brows off camera because they are very time consuming and also I do them basically the same way every single time. I just pretty much use my Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade and an Anastasia Pencil. Now that I am done with this general area for shadow, I am going to line. I'm going to go in with the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner and probably just create a wing. And then I'm going to go underneath my eye with the Aqua XL Pencil from Makeup Forever in white. It's not technically called white, I guess. It's called M16, but I'm calling it white. And I'm going to use that in my waterline to kind of make my eyes look bigger and make them pop. The mirror I'm using might get in the way of the camera. I'm sorry about that, but I definitely cannot do my liner in the mirror behind you guys. It's too far away. I literally use this Tarte Skin Twinkle palette for my mirror almost every day because it just has such a giant mirror section and it also stands itself up like I can prop it at any level so I can actually see myself at the correct angle. Most palettes that I have, including the Anastasia one, if you try to look at something, it just flops down or flops forward. And so while it is a good mirror to like check yourself in, it's not a good mirror to like really apply with. So I prefer using this one. This one is my holy grail mirror, oddly enough. I've got to say something about this Aqua XL pencil from Makeup Forever. I went to Ulta about two weeks ago and asked them if they could find me any white waterline eye pencil because I hadn't had one and I'd seen a lot of people using them to brighten up the eyes and to make the eyes look a little bigger and the only ones I had tried were drugstore ones and obviously those just did not work and so I went to Ulta and I asked and they brought me a bunch. They didn't have a Makeup Forever counter there, but they bought me a bunch. I think they brought me like a Stilla one and maybe an Urban Decay one and a couple others, but I sampled all of them right there. And all of them either went on cakey or they skipped or they were like this, this nude as opposed to a white. And while on Fair People, that would probably look great with my olive skin, it really brought out the green and it just made me look witchy. And so I pretty much had given up on eye pencils because these were all high quality brands and they, they weren't working either. And that's when I received my sample size of the other Makeup Forever Aqua XL eye pencil, this little black one. I just got it from an order from Sephora. It was just a little deluxe sample type deal. And it worked so flawlessly on me, better than any other eyeliner pencil had before. And I think part of that is the Aqua XL, how waterproof it is, because it just stays there so long. I've seen a couple reviews of people saying that after a couple hours, it started to fade away. I haven't noticed that yet. So far on me, it's been phenomenal, but I ordered this one because of that and my life has been changed. I actually can wear a white liner that shows up white and that stays in my waterline. So I highly recommend this guy. Now that I'm finished doing all that lining jazz, I am going to reach in my drawer of goodies and pull out some lashes to decide on. Um, if you follow me on Snapchat, you may have seen a picture of these lashes. I just made a purchase at Huda Beauty. Pretty eyes. And got three different false lashes um, from their classic false lash collection. I have Scarlet, which you guys have seen me wear before. I wore that in my Benefit Cheekathon review. Um, I'll link that video somewhere on the screen if you're interested in seeing that. And then I got Sasha, which are slightly more natural and pretty. 
And then I got Lana, which is very long and dramatic like Scarlet is, but Scarlet wings out at the edges and Lana kind of gets longer towards the center. And I've never used a pair of lashes like that, so I think for today, I'm gonna go with Lana. I will be using my Velour Lashes Black Lash Adhesive. It's rose-scented, and it has a little brush. I forgot to mention that I used the Dior, Dior Show Mascara for my mascara before I put my lashes on. And also, I have a little pal with me today. His name is Hunter, and he's one of two brothers. We just got new kittens. And he came down to help me with my makeup, so I figured I'd introduce him to you all. You will might see his brother another time, but he's a purr monster. His brother is a little more rambunctious and playful and aggressive. He likes to try to attack your feet a lot, and this one just likes to cuddle a lot. Yeah, don't you? Hi. Oh, alright, see you later. Okay, well... I think I am done with the eyes for now, so I'm going to get started on the face. I'm going to moisturize with the Josie Moran Argan Daily Moisturizer. Which I'm almost out of. It's really nice to be home today and doing makeup. When I thought I was going to have to wake up at 7 and go work for 8 hours building a house. It's kind of nice to just relax. I'm just kind of chilling. Enjoying doing my makeup and the purring kitten next to me. I'm going to prime my face. I'm going to be using my Smashbox Photo Finish Silicone Primer on most of my face and then the hourglass ambient light correcting primer on my under eyes this is because it's not that good to use a silicone primer on your under eyes it can cake up and it can create wrinkle lines by the way i decided to start putting my hair up in a slightly different way than I did in my last Get Ready With Me. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link somewhere on the screen for that. I tied my hair up with a little rubber band straight up, so it looked like I had a little tree on top of my head, and it's not the most attractive thing, especially for camera, and so I'm trying it kind of on the side this time to Maybe make it look a little less awkward, sort of a misty style ponytail. Hunter, what are you doing? Why are you crying? I have to go deal with a crying kitten, I'll be right back. Okay, now that we are all primed up, I'm going to be going in with foundation. Today I'm going to use my Dior Dior Skin Foundation, Dior Skin Nude in the shade 020. Just gonna do two pumps, eh, three pumps on the back of my hand. And I'm actually going to mix a little bit of Giorgio Armani Fluid Sheer in there to kind of give it a more glowy look, a little less matte. Just gonna mix that all around with my beauty blender and then apply it. I like to just dot the product around my face and then buff them all in with the beauty blender. Wow, that is a lot more luminous than it normally is. Hopefully it didn't lighten it too much. Still seems to match my color pretty well. Okay, now that we have our base all figured out, I'm going to conceal to start mapping out my face. I'm going to be using two different concealers today. I'm going to be using the Naked Skin Urban Decay Concealer in the shade Fair Neutral for my under eyes. And I'm going to be using the Maybelline New York Concealer in the shade 15 Fair. This one's a little darker, so I like to use this on my forehead and my nose and right in between the two darker parts of my cheek. Oh, actually, before I 
do all that concealing jazz. I'm going to go in with the NYX Color Correcting Concealer in this little peachy shade and just dab a little bit of that under my eyes where it's really dark. Now for concealing. And I'm gonna buff it all in with my Beauty Blender and set it with my Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. Now that I am all lit up, I'm going to finish the under portion of my eyes. I'm gonna, I guess, use Primavera underneath on the lower lash line and Vermeer right at that inner corner near the tear duct to lighten everything up. Now your eyes should look something like this and they are complete except for lower lash line mascara. For that I'm going to be using my sample size of the Roller Lash by Benefit Cosmetics. I love the definition that this gives to the lower lash line, but you have to make sure not to poke your eye out with the long end. There we go. That is the fully finished eye look. It's got all of these dark burgundy red colors. It looks really nice for summer with the hot sun. If you do a nice golden highlight, which is what I'm going to do today, it'll really look like a sort of sun-kissed nice look. But it's also one that you can continue to wear into the night. It's definitely not only a summer day look. Now I'm going to contour my face with my brand new Kevin O'Coin Sculpting Powder in Medium. This is such a high quality product. Uh, if you guys have never heard of Kevin O'Coin, he is infamous for making very small products like this and like one of my other favorites by him, the Sensual Skin Enhancer. They look very, very small when you first see them, but the thing about his products is they work so well. And so you only have to use the tiniest, tiniest amount of the product to actually get the desired effect. Now I am just going to take this underneath my cheekbones and under my jawline and sculpt out the face. By the way, I'm using my Artiste Oval 6 brush for this, and then I'm going to strengthen the bottom segment of this to create more definition with the Artiste Oval 4. Now I'm going to take this on the Artiste Oval 4 again and sculpt out my nose just a little bit. I don't like to do super strong nose contouring because nose contouring is hard to make look natural. You can pretty much always tell when someone has contoured their nose. But if you just do a little bit, right like that, right at the top, I think it still looks very nice and very natural. Now I'm going to use blush today. I guess I'm going to mix a couple of mine together. This is kind of a weird combo, but I'm going to mix the NARS Golu, which is this very, very pretty, slightly darker blush and this apricot colored wet and wild color icon blush this is officially in the shade apricot in the middle i really enjoy this formula wet and wild honestly used to be my least favorite company of all even out of all the drugstore companies but lately they've put out a really nice highlighter and these blushes definitely have a much nicer formula than anything that they used to have. So they're definitely stepping up their game. This, so far out of any blush I've ever used, is the one I've found that complements my skin tone the most. And last but certainly not least, I am going to do my highlight. I'm going to also use two products for this. I'm going to take the Sunlight out of the Skin Twinkle Palette by Tarte that I was showing you guys the mirror to earlier. This is a soft golden color and it looks really nice for summer. But it is a little dark and a little under intense for what I usually go for. So I like to use this underneath as a base and then take my Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Moonstone and just kind of top it off with that. 
to really pop the cheeks. I'm just going to take that Becca and put a tiny little dab on my nose. Give it that glow. All right, now I'm going to set my face with a setting powder. I'm going to be using the RCMA No Color Powder and also use my MAC Fix Plus spray to finish off the face and then we will move on to the lips. I had a little bit of trouble deciding on what color I wanted to do on my lips today because I just placed uh, an order at MAC getting a bunch of different lip pencils and colors and then, more excitingly, placed an order at Jeffree Star right when he restocked. I was able to get Unicorn Blood and Rose Matter, which are both very coveted colors and I'm really, really excited for those to come. But as I was looking through my colors to decide what I wanted to do for this look, I just kept thinking about those and how much I wanted to use them. So next time you'll see those, but this time I wasn't able to obviously, so I ended up deciding on lining my lip with the Kylie Lip Kit in the shade Candy K Lip Liner, and then filling that in with the Stilla Stay All Day Liquid Lipstick in the shade Patina. This is my favorite shade by Stilla that I own. It's this sort of movie dusty pink and it's just gorgeous. It goes really well with my skin tone, I think, and with most eye looks I decide to do. And with that, that is the finished product today for this Get Ready With Me. It has the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette all over the eyes with some oranges and reds fading up to browns. Very good for a hot day. And then I have the Huda lashes in Lana, these very long lashes with the center longer than the outer corner. And the Patina lipstick and some golden glow on the cheeks. It's just a very nice look for going out for like a couple drinks with your friends or going out to the park or just kind of being outside or being out and enjoying the warmth. I think that this look will really work well for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this get ready with me slash tutorial thing. I like making these just because I like showing you guys the products that I'm using and actually showing me using them when I do hauls and reviews and stuff. While I really love doing those too, you guys can't actually see what the product looks like in application. And so that's why I really enjoy doing these types of videos. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That should be right below this. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I am going to be doing a lot more of these Get Ready With Me style videos, as well as a bunch of other cosmetic and beauty based videos on this YouTube channel. So stay tuned for those. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.